So today we're going to talk about the very basics of how an engine works. And if you've already had some uh, mechanical background, this might be very basic information for you, but this is for uh, our novices that haven't really ever worked on a motor and uh, are kind of curious what makes a motor work. Any upward motor has this setup. Any small engine is just like this. And even your car and big trucks, they all operate on the same principle. They all have the same basic parts. So a few things we'll look at today is going to be our cylinder, spark plug, piston, intake, exhaust, air fuel mixture that moves through the intake, and our fire triangle. The fire triangle are the three things that you need to make fire. Uh, obviously, fire is what makes our uh, engines run or the ignition of fuel. So the three things we need for the engine to run is going to be fuel, spark, and oxygen. Without those three things, the engine will not run and you will not get fire. You can have fuel and a spark. So you could take a lighter and uh, put it into a can of diesel fuel and light it underneath inside the fuel, but it just, it won't ignite. Don't try it, but it, it won't work. You have to have oxygen there to actually cause fire. Uh, technically, you could provide too much fuel and uh, not enough oxygen, and you could almost put a fire out by using extra fuel. So you could extinguish uh, a fire by actually dumping a fuel source on it. Again, don't try it. Uh, if we have too little oxygen and too much fuel, or uh, too little fuel and too much oxygen, we won't get a fire. So that's where our carburetor comes into play here. That mixes the right amount of air and fuel together. And then the air-fuel mixture moves through the intake and it's metered by our throttle plate here. So the bigger you twist uh, on the throttle there, the more you twist the throttle, the plate here, the throttle plate twists open and allows more air and fuel to flow in. So that's actually your power right here. So the air and fuel get mixed together in the carburetor, flow through the intake, go into the intake valve. And at this point, the piston might be at the top here. And as the intake valve opens, the piston will move down, draw air and fuel in. The intake valve closes. The piston moves up and compresses the air and fuel. You then have your spark plug go spark and ignite the, your air and fuel. So you have your third part of the triangle there. It burns and, of course, heats up and expands, pushes the piston down. The piston then, once it gets all the way down, will have the uh, exhaust valve open, push all the burnt uh, gases out, all the spent fuel and oxygen, out through the exhaust. It will close the exhaust valve, open the intake valve again, pull down a new charge of air and fuel, close the intake valve, compress it, ignite it, go down, open the exhaust valve, go back up, push it out, and just keeps repeating that process thousands of times a minute. That's uh, every uh, two RPM you get one fire cycle. So uh, why we call these four stroke motors is it actually takes four strokes of the piston to make one power cycle. So that's a four stroke. If you talk about a two stroke motor, that's actually, it's making power every two strokes. And, uh, and we'll look at that another time, but this is just how your basic four stroke motor works. Most of your outboards are all going to be four strokes and then your new ones, your eight horsepower, your 9.9 .9 horsepower is all the way up to 20 something will be uh, four stroke motors typically. So looking at what this looks like on a real motor here, we'll go ahead and take our camera and look at this small engine. Now this isn't an outboard motor, but this is very similar to an outboard motor. We have looking at it here, our carburetor and our intake port. These are our actual tops of the valves. You can see those springs that pull the valves back closed, and then we can push down and open the valve. And uh, we have our exhaust valve over here, so we can push down and open that guy up. Hopefully you can see that in the video there. And then of course on the other side here, we have our exhaust port. So when the exhaust valve opens, the exhaust would flow out through there. Looking inside here, we have our crankshaft. So this is our crankshaft here that has our connecting rod attached to it. We can turn that a little bit there. You can see that connecting rod is what connects the piston to the crankshaft. You can see the bottom of the piston just poking out of the bottom of the cylinder there as it moves up and down. And then this gear here is what's called our camshaft. And you can notice it's bigger here. It's bigger than uh, the diameter gear on our crankshaft. And the reason is there, the camshaft moves half the speed of the crankshaft. It moves slower 
because, like we said, that piston has to move up and down four times to make one power cycle, and the cam only wants to open those valves twice. So you can see as I turn this, uh, our crankshaft here, you can see those valves moving up and down. So we have our intake valve open, drawing air in. The intake valve closes as we compress that. We have a power cycle. Then as the piston comes back up, we'll open our exhaust valve, dump that spent air back out, and the, pr the process just keeps repeating there. And so this is also, looking here, this is a very small version of a carburetor. We can see some parts of it are cut away. We've actually drilled into our bowl here. That's our float down inside there. We'll take a look at how that moves up and down. So if the bowl was empty and there was no fuel in there, the float would be down. Then once it filled with fuel, it would spring back up, float to the top. We can see, just like the carburetor on our outboard motor, we have a choke plate on the very front there. We can open and close that choke plate. So behind that choke plate, hopefully you can see down inside the carburetor there, that's our throttle plate behind there. And we have our jet that delivers the fuel, just like we do on our carburetors, on our motors, right behind that choke plate there. So really simple design. That's really all there is to any motor. Even on your car, there's just a few more cylinders. This is obviously a single cylinder. On our outboards, they're typically uh, one or two cylinders. We have our spark plug here. That's what an actual spark plug looks like. You can see that gap right there is where our spark jumps across. So it'll jump from that little center to, the, uh, to our grounding rod there. And when the spark jumps across that gap, presumably there'd be some air and fuel mixture floating in between there, and that would ignite and then ignite the entire charge within the cylinder. So that is the very basics of our engines. There's really not much more to them than that. They all work on the same exact principle and they just need oxygen, fuel, and spark to run. Now, a couple things to note as they pertain to our outboard motors. When you show up to uh, practice early morning, the motor's been sitting all night, you go to start it, and you pull on that cord, you'll feel it kind of, it's hard at first, and then it gets easier, and then hard again, and each one of those times it gets hard to push is actually a compression stroke, where both valves are closed and you're compressing the air, the fuel charge, and then as it gets easier, that's actually when the piston starts moving back down. And eventually, if you go through a couple of those compression strokes, the spark plug fires each time, it finally ignites, and the motor will begin to run. Now, why doesn't it just start running on the very first tug or the very first compression stroke? Well, it's been sitting all night, so the air and fuel probably doesn't really exist anymore inside this intake pipe. So it's gotta get from the carburetor, you need airflow through the carburetor, and to flow at a good rate before it'll start to mix the air and fuel and then travel through the intake pipe, pass the intake valve into the actual cylinder, be compressed, and then ignite. So that's why it'll take, uh, you know, one long big pull, maybe three to four compression cycles, uh, sometimes even a couple pulls to really get your triangle just right, the right amount of fuel and the right amount of oxygen. Typically a motor that's been sitting overnight will not have the fuel ready to be delivered. Uh, on the contrary, if you were to over prime the motor, say you push that little primer bulb a whole bunch of times on the front of the motor, or if you uh, use the choke too much and uh, you got too much fuel in there, well, with too much fuel now, you would have uh, an out of balance triangle and you would need to turn your choke off, open your throttle plate all the wide open to get as much air flow through there as possible, keep pulling the motor continuously, get the air flow to blow out any excess fuel until the triangle gets back into balance and then your motor will run. So uh, we'll now look at the basics of how to get a motor started uh, that you're just walking up to after a whole night. Hopefully that makes a little bit of sense. Any questions at all, don't hesitate to leave it in the comments or send us a note on the website. Hopefully this video has been helpful and learn a little bit more about how your motor works. And uh, definitely check out some of our other videos, send them along to your friends so everyone can learn a little bit about uh, how our equipment works.